get Mikey. Yeah, he hates everything. I asked some pointed questions. The counter clerk looked anxious. Why do you have 15 kinds of energy bars, but only one brand of straight pins, and those are Chinese? Why not American? This was my tenth stop for data collection, so I had the process down to a science at this point. The poor clerk said, you can talk to the manager if you want. Manager comes over after the clerk whispered to him about a crazy pin guy. Is there a problem? I don't know. Do you think it's a problem to sell 15 different energy bars, but only one brand of pins? He pondered for a second, probably about calling security. Did you want sewing supplies? We're really just a drugstore. Ah, but you do sell pins. Chinese pins. Why don't you sell American pins? Sir, our purchasing folks handle stock. Now, we could order American pins if you want. We could have them in two weeks. I pretended to think that over, and then I got to say what I wanted to say all along. Nah, I'll stick with these. I got interested in pins through Adam Smith. Not when he described a pin factory, but when he said division of labor is limited by the extent of the market. Now, one person could make pins. Grab the wire, pull some out, cut it into pin lengths, sharpen the end, flatten the head, put the pin in a box, and then start over. Grab the wire. One artisan could supply all the pins for a village, because pins made that way are so expensive people don't buy them. But imagine our pin artisan gets a huge order, more than he can handle. He hires a temp. Now pin guy straightens and cuts, temp guy stretches, flattens, and boxes. Something strange happens. Two workers don't just make twice as many pins. Using division of labor, two workers produce three or five times as many pins. And as each gets more dexterous and devises simple tools to help do the work, they make even more. Now, though, they have more pins than the village has been buying. Two things happen. First, they cut the price and sell lots more pins even in their village because of the lower price. Second, their price advantage makes it an easy target to go get orders from new customers in the next village or the next country. Soon they hire a third worker and a fourth, dividing the tasks into ever smaller chunks. More division of labor, more productivity, higher wages and lower prices. The extent of the market quickly becomes global. Self-sufficiency is expensive. We could make pins in our house or in North Carolina or somewhere in the U.S., but we're better off specializing in only making those things that suit our comparative advantage and then buying everything that can be made more cheaply abroad. So if you look in your sewing basket and you see that all the pins that you have are from China, that's okay. You can stick with those. Yeah, he hates everything.